What is good, everybody? We are back. It's the Cooligans, buddy. You recognize that voice. Man, <laughs> you just brought me back, man. <laughs> you just brought me back to Miami right there with that with that accent. I love hearing Poppy. There it is. Uh, and the voice that you're hearing is not... Uh, I, we got a replacement Cuban. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is not Alexis Guerreros. Uh, I am joined. You've seen him on, uh, obviously, on uh, MLS Extra, Extra Time. You see him on, on Apple TV. Uh, sh- MLS season pass. Shout out to Stefano Fusato, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you so awesome much. Awesome to be here, man. Thanks so much for coming through, man. I seriously, really appreciate it. We, uh, yeah, we we just, like just recently met in person, but you're yeah. someone I've known for years. I think we followed each other for yep. for a long time while you were. I think I. Um, started really seeing you around when you were uh, covering soccer at ESPN. Yeah, and now, boom! You're just uh, you're you're in everybody's homes now <laughs> in Espanol on, on uh, MLS season pass. How's how's that been so far? But it's it's fun, man. It's cool to be. Uh, just focused on one sport now rather than when I was at ESPN I did like nine different sports for them and <laughs> sometimes I didn't got confused whether I was talking about college football <laughs> NFL MLB I was sure. like you know what the, what the hell's going on uh, but it's fun it's fun to be able to, to, to talk about our league uh, here domestically it's been awesome to do it in both languages and, and do a little bit of commentary do a little bit of hosting uh, and yeah, man, it's fun. We got we got Messi in our league now, even though well, he's not really been around too much. But it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been a good time. He's, all he's, you know what? I've I heard that he spent uh, four thousand dollars for tickets to watch uh, Inter Miami. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's fine with the prices going up a little bit. Uh, it's all no good. comment. No comment. No comment. They pay my bills, bro. <laughs> no, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, it costs to see Messi sometimes. What are you gonna yeah, do? it's pretty wild. Um, all right, but you, you, we have we have a lot to discuss today. Obviously. Obviously, we are going to talk Major League Soccer, um, but coincidentally, you happen to be a Liverpool fan, yeah, and this yeah. is uh, this this is quite serendipitous. It's yeah. all worked out. <laughs> we all planned it. No, this was us. We planned that this yeah. was going to yeah, happen. This was going to happen. Yeah, because you guys knew, but you guys were in on the fix too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dog. Come on, man. I called Darren England. I was like, Darren, I need you, my guy. We always, uh, you know, we have, and we have a, a big show today. We're also going to be joined by Fisher Stevens, yeah. uh, the, the director of the new Beckham documentary that Absolutely. is. Uh, uh, coming out on Netflix uh, this Wednesday, October fourth. Uh, an incredible conversation with him and about David Beckham. So this is a very just Miami heavy episode. I love okay, it. Very all right. Miami show. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and you may remember Fisher Stevens. Uh, if you don't recognize the name, there's some people that uh, you know who who might be older than thirty <laughs> listening to the show. But there was a very popular movie called Short Circuit. Uh, and and Fisher Stevens is the guy, the the the, the in, quote unquote Indian guy yeah. in the movie, even though he is not actually in the. It's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Look up a season sorry on Conan to get the whole story behind that because it's absolutely fascinating. But Fisher Stevens uh, came through. He's also a Liverpool yeah. fan, so he's a, it's a lot of relevance <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. You, you guys really did pull some <laughs> strings did, with yeah. it, bro. We got part of the yeah. plan. <laughs> Let's get right to it. <laughs> because uh, Tottenham at Tottenham Stadium, they're hosting Liverpool Football Club. And in, in one of the uh, just uh, wildest games, uh, we know the final result. It, it was well, it was 2 1. Yep. But there was uh, uh, 2 1, uh, two, red cards. That was the red cards alone. That wasn't even the scoreline. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. There were uh, two red cards issued uh, for, uh, for Liverpool. And and they were, look, they were playing with nine men, and it was just it, at what point you it felt like they were gonna hold on, right? But it, what ended up after this game, what being the actual story, uh, was the decision to overturn uh, to or, or I I I, mean, I don't even know what words to use. I'm gonna say not overturn. Over, <laughs> yeah, we don't I, even know. Really, doesn't even matter what the refs don't even know. They still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Luis Diaz scored a goal. It was a great ball, a great pass, and great goal. It uh, the, uh, on the field, it, it turned out to uh, they called it offside, and uh, we were all watching the game, and we're looking at it on screen right now. We're looking at the moment of uh, uh, you know of where you would you would put down the offside lines and and just and move on with your day, right? Yeah, you right. And, and you you could punch out and be like, how did the day work, <laughs> yeah. right? It's all you gotta do, just draw I the did, lines. I did my job. I put down the little lines, okay. And they did not. So I'm watching the game uh, like everyone else, and I I see that they there's no lines. Yep. Nobody put down any lines, and then they just say um, uh, check complete, keep it moving. Offsides. Uh, uh, no offside. Goal. goal does goal doesn't count. And really don't really think about it much more. You just be like, okay, that it is what it is. Uh, but that is not what ends <laughs> up being the, <laughs> the the story after this match because 
uh, it, it, you know, just it, essentially what ended up happening was after the check complete, we learned that the VAR, Darren England, and this is the problem. When you know the VAR's name, that's a bad yeah, sign. That ain't you good, man. That ain't good. You, you know never want to know that guy's name. <laughs> My man should be in the shadows. You should yeah. never hear his name. Uh, but Darren England and then, then the assistant VAR, Dan Cook. Why do we know your name, dog? <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. The assistant VR, bro. <laughs> You're like, uh, come uh, on. Uh, I, I, this is like, it's hard to relive all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be mad all I, over I, again. I got to tell the story. Uh, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> So what ends up happening is uh, they check complete. They keep they they kick off and the game uh, keeps going. But um, because he said check complete, so apparently what happened was that he th- uh, that Darren England thought that it was a goal on the field, yeah. which is why he said check complete, confirming the goal. Didn't realize that the 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 linesman and the ref were saying that it was offside. And that's it. He, he he did the check complete confirming their call on the field because he thought the call on the field yeah. was a goal, which that just brings up a billion other questions yeah. of like, bro, are you watching the are same you- game <laughs> that we're watching? That's what, that's what I'm saying. Because when you, you watch the game, if you're watching the game, we're all watching the game. If you see Luis Diaz's reaction after the goal, it's, oh, man. Right. What do you think it is? <laughs> you think he's going to be doing this and being all upset they if, don't have if they call it a goal? They don't have that goal celebration in FIFA. No, the, the I, angry, I, I, sad, yeah, why like, did I do that? How come the ref, mad at the ref? Yeah, That's man. not a happy goal celebration. <laughs> like, so if they are not, if they don't see that, because we all saw it, we're like, oh, it's it's going to get ruled out. And then we see the replay. Oh, no, it's not. Right. If, if, if he doesn't see the reaction from Luis Diaz, and I'm pretty sure they probably had a, a shot from the from the sideline with the flag up, <laughs> yes, you know what I mean. So, so if you're not watching that, what you watching, bro? <laughs> where are you watching? And via, and I can speak to that. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I went to uh, Alexis and I. We went to a, a soccer coaches convention, the mm-hmm. one that they do every year, the United Soccer Coaches. Um, and MLS had a VAR booth where you could be be the VAR. Oh wow! Right, and and you're and it's you have about uh, four four or six screens. This is probably like a minimal minimalized right. version right. of yeah, yeah, what yeah. VAR is. Um, so I'm sitting there, and and literally I have like um, Sabiga, Robert <laughs> Sabiga, okay. like one yeah, of the MLS yeah. referees, yeah, like yeah, all, yeah. over my shoulder, and I'm like the pressure's on, bro. <laughs> but I see every single angle. I mean, just definitely what the, t- the 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 TV broadcast does not see. I I saw several different angles of different plays. There's there's it's almost impossible to not uh, look. I did bar for 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 eight minutes, <laughs> eight and minutes, I did, I could have got this call right. That's that's a bad sign. Yeah, that, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> so the, the, and and look, they the, the, the initial um you know. I, after the game, they they put out the response and basically the the, the statement saying like uh, PGA MOL just confirmed that it was a it, it was an error. It was yeah. just like an objective human e- error. Human error. error. <laughs> and then when you realize what the human error is, <laughs> it's just so remarkable that it's just a no. That's not what I said. No, no, no. <laughs> what? What you? No. I. You know what I mean? But that's it's, my question. Like when that all happened, you can't. And you see that they're like just continuing play and they're not giving the goal. Don't you just be like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hold up, hold up, talk to this guy. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. stop. Like, why doesn't that happen then after? So it's not just one human error, right? I mean, just the fact that already it was already twelve versus nine, I guess, you know, in that game. Uh, but that's just my that's just my fandom coming out. Sorry about that. But it's like you, you know they had so many opportunities to still stop this and get it right, right? And they knew it's a human error. The guy who made the call knows. Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah, this is this is messed up. I, I, this is not wrong. This is not right. <laughs> like what what's going on? And then they don't do. They don't call down, and it just continues on. It's wild. It's wild that this happens in a Premier League game for Bro. this to happen is insane. And it it, it kind of just highlights like the the yes the Premier League they have the most money and the best players and blah 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 and the most fanfare and the most eyes and everything. Yeah. And it, there's just something they they generally. Tend to have the worst refereeing. They, they yeah, every yeah. week they're they're easily seats. every week. It's gotten, but the thing is that's too. It's gotten progressively worse since VAR came, and I think that's really everyone's big problem. Like before VAR, we could accept, you know, like a bad call here and there. Oh, he missed the offsides. Oh, he got like a foul wrong or whatever. Yeah. 
now, bro, that you have computers telling you exactly yeah. what well, happened. There's no excuse it's anymore. Yeah. It, it, and that's the big issue is that v, uh, now the conversations are happening about should we get rid of VAR? We don't need it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the game was better beforehand. Maybe it was, but like, I don't know if you ever read uh, um, Arsene Wenger's uh, uh, autobiography. And, and he talks about the, the corruption yeah. in refereeing yeah. that it almost, it, he almost. Uh, uh, he he left France because of it. He yeah. was just like, I can't. I think he went to Japan because he's like, I just want <laughs> to be get around. Out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Somebody, I hope there's just more honesty <laughs> over there. <laughs> and look, so I think the the people calling for like get rid of VAR that that's not a reality in my no. opinion because the game can be so and we've already lived it right uh, in so many decades of just like unbelievable uh, uh you know what is it no era penal and, and oh, yeah. whatever Mexico, yep. Yep. <laughs> no era penal yep. So we we've been through it. We can't. We, now we have a new, like you know, uh, uh, area to direct our anger at, and it is it is VAR. It, it has to be focused on making this better. Yeah, look, it has to be better. And and look, if, you know, on the real, you know, I'm not for, take Liverpool out of this. Like every team's gonna get screwed at some point. Like it's just gonna happen with right. a refereeing decision. So I'm cool with that. But what happened this weekend and having that, allowing that human error, that's just bad on the sport. Here, that's just bad for the sport from A to Z, from, from any country you're talking about, any yeah. league. This is not what you want to see. You have VAR for a reason to get these calls right. You can't have an error like that, especially on the biggest stage in yeah, front yeah, of the dude. world <laughs> uh, in a massive match that, I mean, look, it could cost Liverpool top four. It could cost if they're battling for the title. Millions. I mean, you know, uh, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars <laughs> for, for one guy getting a call wrong so and the fact two that they guys. admit it two <laughs> guys it's not even one it's two Dan Cook you're not getting away with this <laughs> yeah yeah Dan we Cook so, yeah. <laughs> we, so, we know you're involved too Dan we know <laughs> it, it is uh, it's wild and you know you work with Christina Uncle yep. who I, I, ju we, I just got to hang I, I see her from time to time but I got to hang out with her at the EAFC yep. uh, launch and I, I and, and I think people like her uh, um, just putting a, a, a face and a voice to two referees uh, to to add some uh, humanity because we get mad at referees in every sport uh, and it's nice to uh, just have a person like oh, okay this is their perspective right. and uh, so I've I've grown a, a you know a, a, just a lot of sympathy for for referees yeah. but this is one of those things of like you know Dar Darren England. <laughs> And Dan Cook. <laughs> oh, did this work? I don't, I don't know. If it's, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> what happened? Why is this not working? Right, 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 right. Dan Cook. He's in our and, systems too. And bro. Dan Cook. Uh, they were they were uh, both taken off of their uh, assignments the, the next uh, day. I forgot what games they were supposed to uh, call. Yep. But they... Um, uh, and they, we just hear all this stuff right all these uh, uh stories about them and and uh and this is why i mentioned uh, christina uncle because she was sort of talking about the 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 concern people were having that that um the refereeing crew was assigned to a, a saudi charity game charity or something match. like that in the uae yeah. in the uae and uh so then uh, christina uncle had brought up like okay are we going to talk about uh, the, the uh, how overworked some of the referees are, and like and the travel, and especially in, in Major League Soccer where they have to travel thousands and thousands of miles from from match to match. Like maybe this opens the door to start thinking about uh, the the quality of refereeing, how we're treating the referees, uh, yeah, uh, uh, th things along those lines. But it's so I'm like I'm stuck between the two. I'm like I have some sympathy of like yeah maybe. Yeah, they, maybe they shouldn't be working 48 hours before in, you know, at, at taking a 15-hour flight or whatever. But, that's, but that choice, that's on them. Yeah. That's their decision. They, to go, got, well, I don't, they got paid. They got paid for that. that yeah. right. Like, well. it, it, in most situations, I will agree with, and Christina Uncle, you know, I've had these conversations with her uh, in the past. I haven't had a chance to speak with her yet since this whole situation, since yeah, this yeah. happened at, uh, in Tottenham this weekend. So I would love to get her perspective on it, but... This that was their choice to go over sure, there and sure. get paid and, and get that. That wasn't the over. Yes, right, referees right, right. Yeah, are overworked, fair, especially fair. here in Major League Soccer. Like you said, I mean it's it's a haul for them to get from game to game and, and things like this. But the, in this case, with there with, with these guys from England and they're in England. I mean it's like come on, man. Like you 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 have a you're scheduled for a match for your main job. It's like. Me trying, me trying to like, oh, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, it's MLS day today, uh, but the day before, even though I got a 14-hour work day, the day before, I'm gonna go 
take a job in uh, in Europe somewhere, <laughs> and, and then expect and then fly back and expect, yeah. expect it to be on my game for you know my main MLS gig here. Damn, you know I, didn't I, mean? know, like, I didn't know Stefano was the Wolves sideline <laughs> reporter. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, have just to show be. up over there. <laughs> <laughs> big man. win, big win this week again for, for the boys. <laughs> my man <laughs> is in Birmingham the, the the night before a big day. Uh, yeah, it, it is a uh, 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 quite uh, uh, surreal the uh, th- this situation, but it, it, it allows me to comfortably kind of say. Uh, you know, or at least uh, two things. Well, one is like MLS referees are better than this. I, 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 I just I, my experience. Even though you get you know frustrated at, at you know even with Christina Uncle, I, I've been angry at Ted Uncle sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, yeah, Ted, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. You know, every time uh, Ted Uncle was assigned to like uh, NYCFC games in like 2015, 2016, I'm like, oh, bro, what? <laughs> 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 but you know what? Maybe I'm like, okay, maybe he was going through something, right? <laughs> and um, Sorry, and- Christina. <laughs> <laughs> this is our roast of Ted Uncle. Let's go. Uh, but then the, then the other thing is just like, bro, how is your name Darren England, bro? Your name is England. Your name is England? Dog. Maybe that's the problem. Bro. We've got to get these English referees out of here. How? What a... Right, we got to get, get, get William American to be the next uh, VAR over there. My man, Bill America. Bill <laughs> <laughs> Billy America. <laughs> Billy USA. <laughs> okay, teach him how it's done out there. Uh, just just such a... I mean, look, it's, it's frustrating. I, I, and honestly, it's probably... It, yeah, it is frustrating, and it's, it makes it worse that Liverpool lost the game the way yeah. that they did. So tough on Joel <laughs> Mati, man. Yeah. I feel bad for him. He had such a good game up to that point, too. Playing man. with nine, nine players... Yeah. Uh, Exhausted yeah. and just defending. I mean, you could you could tell you could see. I mean, and there were also a couple moments. Where I thought they were going to score yeah. with, with nine guys. Yeah. That's how uh, uh, you I'll know. put the Liverpool cap on and say like they played a hell of a game oh, considering absolutely. the situation. Yeah, and I mean that's a team that they're showing you that the, the Liverpool kind of like meant you know mentality monsters. How they they kind of gained that name over the last uh, few years. Not so much last season, uh, but you're seeing it right because they were still fighting. They were still in that game. Couldn't tell too much that it was, you know, yeah. 11 v 9 or 12 v 9 uh, <laughs> in, in that game because, you know, they were just fighting to the end. And it's it's brutal that it happened that way for Joel Matip to, to get that own goal. Own golazo, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a banger in the top <laughs> corner. No uh, but, you know what I mean? That, that, that's the way it goes. But, you know, I feel like for Liverpool themselves, this will be a game that's going to be like, all right. Rally, rally it up and yeah, kind of just get motivated sure. now. They just got to stop getting red cards, man. Yeah, it's just it's, overall, because they got four on the season already, including so, those two. It's so wild. And they won the games yeah, that they yeah, had yeah, the red yeah, cards. Yeah, so it's yeah, almost yeah. seemed like... I even made a joke. I was just like, oh, Liverpool uh, victory incoming, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After the red card, uh, the, the one uh, to, to Jota was like... I mean, it was two yellows. So, right, but right, But right. uh, it was Curtis that Jones. First one. The Curtis Jones was the first one, which is... That, that was an unfortunate one. I mean, look, I want actually want to get your perspective. You think that's a red card? Do you think... I mean, the foul... Ended up being bad, but in my opinion, he has nowhere to go. The ball, his foot rolls on Bro, the ball. Oh, but when. My homie Darren England's on club <laughs> you know what we got to do, bro. <laughs> Darren never gets Darren's it wrong, like, nah, bro. Man, that's what a red. You, are you trying to doubt my man Darren England and Dan Cook? I could understand maybe Darren England, <laughs> but and Dan Cook? I can't even fathom the idea of doubting both of those gentlemen. Uh, no, I don't want to hear those guys' names ever again, bro. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. No more. No more. No more Darren England talk, please. Right, right now, the uh, uh, we've been seeing a lot of uh, reports um, uh, uh, I saw this from Miguel uh, Delaney. I think uh, I think maybe he's with the Athletic. I don't remember where he's from. Uh, wow, well, but this is from uh, Ben Jacobs. Says Liverpool have made a formal request to PGMOL for audio conversations yes, between officials from Louis, uh, Luis Diaz's uh, disallowed goal against Spurs. Club believe it's important to hear full uh, for full transparency and will use it uh, to assess the next steps. And and it's also it's a little bit like what are they really gonna do? I mean, it's just gonna be like yo, this is what happened, bro. We messed up. Um, no, but it's good to hear it. It's yeah, good to yeah. hear how the whole process went down. That's the main thing. I mean, I understand for for Liverpool's sake, uh, I, they want to hear it. I, I, everybody wants to hear it. Yeah. But they, but this is the thing. This is going to be one of the hottest pieces of media. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. In, in probably like footballing history. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, I just want. I hope they say something so stupid on there. <laughs> just. Like, <laughs> Mate, did you see that? Wait, did he call him off? Oh, I thought he called him off. Oh, no, he called I him off. I just want to hear the most incompetent just version of, of whatever this ends up being. But it, I, I mean, it, it, I feel bad because they're going to be so heavily criticized uh, with their, uh, the, the, whatever the miscommunication was. And, and who knows 
where sort of the the root of the miscommunication like did the var say something uh to the center referee that m misunderstood something's lost in translation i don't know like did they use some sort of slang to the <laughs> <laughs> offies he's offies I was like, what no i don't know what that means i don't know I don't no we know they didn't say enough because all they say is check complete check and complete. they don't say check complete that's a goal that's all you had to say that's a goal and then he just brings up all the the conspiracy theories that's the big thing does check right. complete mean my the check was cashed and it went into my bank account <laughs> the check has completed the transfer like bro we don't want I, maybe this is the thing maybe this uh, does something for uh, our perception of refereeing where we like oh they're corrupt they are they are against the the team they're destroying this league and it's just like no man what if they're just stupid right <laughs> <laughs> well, what if they're just, just really dumb i think that's what publicizing this audio is going to do it's going to at least make us be like oh yeah they're just dumb <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not yeah. corrupt they're that's just the dumb. best case scenario best case scenario for pgm <laughs> yeah. i was like oh our guys are actual <laughs> idiots yeah yeah no, nah, it's the best thing that's gonna happen out of this is just gonna be where you know comedians like you are just gonna have a ton of ammo <laughs> Dude, to go at once we hear these. This, uh, this I'm audio. gonna use this for the next like five years. <laughs> you just bro. got yeah, you just got a bit forever, bro. <laughs> Alexis and Christian just four Netflix specials on this one moment. <laughs> just on that moment. <laughs> Christian Belanco presents Darren England <laughs> at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, I don't get it, but whatever. I'll tune in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, just such an insane uh, uh, series of events uh, for just for VAR. And look, VAR never wants to be the the story. You know, referees never want to be the story of of, of, of any eh, game. Some might. <laughs> <laughs> There's some some that might. Uh, but this is kind of a, a crazy one. And th this is one of those uh, decisions or, or or mishaps that ends up changing the game. The the rules in the game are going to be changed somehow yep. to prevent this from yeah. happening again. Yeah. So uh, we we shall see what that ends up looking like. All right, I, I, let's get to the interview with Fisher Stevens. I know, uh, 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 Stefano, you haven't seen it, but nah, we, cr we, crushed, we crushed it. I love it, dude. I love it. <laughs> right. also, don't, don't, mind my, don't mind Fisher's documentary, but they crushed the interview. Yo. The interview is better than the documentary. <laughs> okay. Uh, Beckham's going to be inviting us to his <laughs> Miami home soon after watching this. Uh, but no, this is uh, really dope. Again, the, um, uh, the documentary comes out on uh, October 4th. Uh, we saw the first uh, uh, two episodes of it, and it, it, spectacular. I highly recommend it, even though, oh, yeah, we're the, I mean, Beckham is, uh, uh, you know, already like whatever, most handsome, famous guy <laughs> or whatever. But it's, it's absolutely really interesting, his, his life story and everything that he dealt with in England. Um, yeah, yeah, my wife's actually going to... Is actually one that she watch with me. Okay, okay yeah. and I'm like, oh, why? She's like, it's David Beckham. I'm like, oh, that's why. Yeah, well, it makes a lot of sense. Posh is in there too. A lot. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, so it's great. So uh, you, you know how we're gonna watch this documentary, uh, uh, Stefano, and, and we call him uh, Mike Miguelito because Miguelito. Uh, we got, it. it's, it's, Mike was too white on my. Brain. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> too white. Miguelito, not exactly. 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 um, <laughs> It's also Lado, Hispanic Lado. Heritage Month, all right? Lado. Exactly. Lado. Go Lado. by your Lado. given name, Miguelito. But we're obviously gonna tune in. You know, drinking an ice cold course light. That's the move. Move, all right, uh, it, it always is. It always has uh, been. It, it is, uh, and this is the best thing, Stefano. The best thing about uh, an ice cold Coors Light is that you know when it's cold enough to drink because oh, yeah. the mountain turns, they, they turn blue right on the can or bottle. Doesn't matter what it is, right? It's always <laughs> blue. The light can, the mountains are always blue. You gotta love it, man. It's uh, uh, so look. It, you can watch uh, David Beckham. Uh, you can watch uh, him get a red card uh, for <laughs> for England while you. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, I, yeah you. You know that. Everyone back in 1998, spoiler alert. Yeah. It was a wild time back then. Uh, but uh, as always, Coors Light is uh, is, the, is the one we choose when we need to unwind. Uh, so when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligan. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. <laughs> Let's go. All right, here it is. Here's our conversations with director of the documentary series, Beckham Fisher-Stevens. I mean, illustrious guest doesn't even begin to explain. This gentleman, I mean, storied, storied. I mean, this guy directed 
the, the, the documentary we're about to talk about. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, it's it's always nice to find, uh, uh, you know, when people in Hollywood are involved in, mm. in footy, you know, we Americans, we, Americans. Exactly. It's always nice when, you know, we speak to comedians, we speak to, uh, uh, you know, just people involved in the entertainment industry. But this man is uh, directly connected with I think that we share this in common because we we have both. We have all met David Beckham, right. uh, which is uh, just an honor. But, but we didn't get to meet him like this guy got to <laughs> We didn't him. get the access that he no. did. No, uh, but we we asked for it, and they said absolutely not. <laughs> but, uh, uh, October fourth, uh, the the Beckham doc uh, will air on Netflix. It's a four episode uh, uh, mini series about uh, Beckham and and his family and his history. This guy knows Beckham almost as good as Victoria. <laughs> That's the most important. Part. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. Say that. <laughs> I said almost, ladies and gentlemen. The voice you're hearing. The one and only Fisher Stevens, everybody. Fisher, what's good, man? How's life? Well, how do you guys know? How, where, when did you guys meet? Back we then? met him at the 25th anniversary of the of Major League Soccer. They they held a big event at this hotel in New York. Uh, it was the first year of uh, Inter Miami. This is uh, we met him a month before. Uh, the pandemic began. Uh, it was a different time, yes. Fisher, and we were we met him and Jorge Mas. I asked him to adopt me. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I said, "You got a kid named Brooklyn. I'll be the Bronx Beckham." <laughs> we tried. We tried to get in <laughs> with this family. We trying to be a part of the Beckham. <laughs> so know? we we were Fisher Stevens before Fisher Stevens. <laughs> okay. I think. Okay. I, I, they, they didn't take me in either. Even after all, <laughs> yeah. that. so I'm not. Uh, you know. It didn't work for me either, but but let let's talk about um, uh, the project because this is uh, uh, amazing, right? And I'm you know we're we're both very familiar with David Beckham. We obviously followed him as a footballer for a long time, but you know I I think uh, even as comedians, like one of my favorite things that David Beckham has ever been a part of is the Ali G interview that he did. Yes, like he he just had. Uh, amazing moments of he gets it he gets it he's famous but he has a humility but this this doc focuses on him and his life and his fame uh so my first question to you is simply uh what drove you to do this particular project and i'm also very certain i'm sure there's plenty of people that, that have pitched beckham uh david beckham to like yo we want to make a documentary about you why did he agree with you in particular, I'm just and not and that's not a slight to you or him or anything. <laughs> yeah. What what caused that merge? Yeah, well, how did it happen? Well, really, it happened because of Leonardo DiCaprio. What oh, a flex! Yeah. Okay, what a flex! <laughs> what a flex! Immediately, first question. <laughs> oh, oh, you know how we met him because of Mahatma Gandhi. That's what you just did. <laughs> no, uh, I I uh, listen. I did not pitch this to David. Um, so apparently I, I was in a cab on my way to work on my other job, my acting job. And I get a call from Leo's office saying that David I met Leo and David's been looking for a director for his documentary and struggling. And Leo suggested you, can we give David's office your number? <laughs> and Leo said that I was the guy and, David had seen Before the Flood, and he'd just seen this other film I did called Palmer with Justin Timberlake that I directed. And uh, I wasn't really that interested, to be honest, in doing it. Although, I mean, I didn't know anything about Beckham. I got in, I started following Premier League in 2003, the year that he went to Madrid. Okay. Um, and I just knew about, like, he was this Galactico when I, you know... And then I knew that he was like this brand Beckham and in Miami. And I, and I, and I didn't like know much about the Spice Girls, didn't really listen to the Spice Girls, just thought they were this branded thing. And I figured he wanted me to do it. So I would just kiss his ass and do a branded Beckham <laughs> content film. And uh, I, I, you know, but, but I, of course, my, my people I was working with were British and they're like, you got to meet him. The guy's a legend. He's one of the greatest footballers England ever had. And he had an incredible life. And I started doing due diligence. And then I said, OK, I met with him and he was very different. It was during the pandemic. So it was on Zoom and he was so different than I expected. And I said, why me, man? Like, why me? And he says, I, I just feel like, you know, you're you're the person. I, he just had an instinct. And I think now. Looking back, I think it's because he, I didn't have any baggage. You know, I wasn't British. Yeah. In with all that, you know, oh, growing up with all the the stuff that the tabloids wrote about him and believing all that stuff. And 
I really was on a road to discovery and I think he wanted someone to be on a road to discovery with him. And that's, uh, and then I met him twice and I met Victoria who was hilarious at the dinner. And I was like, she could be funny. This could be great. And I took the job, but it, it was, uh, it wasn't like I pursued him. He pursued me more. But okay, I mean, me. <laughs> even more of a flex, bro. You can double. Uh, I, Leo's hit me up. Beckham's hit yeah. me up. I, mean, I was wondering because you're you're a Liverpool fan. I was like, man, this got to be there. Like, I'm an Arsenal fan. I would never do a documentary on Harry Kane. It certainly wouldn't turn out good. It wouldn't be positive. <laughs> it, it would be a hit piece. Yeah, you know? yeah, it would just be a collage of misses, you know. But uh, I guess yeah, since you yeah. since you missed that era. It really doesn't stand out. But I guess the question I have is you mentioned, you know, some a British person told you he's a legend in England. And you you touch on this in the film. There's a period of time where that wasn't necessarily the case. England didn't really think of him yet as a legend. And he was thought of as a little negative uh, right around that 98 time. What are your what what did you think? What do you think you gained sort of an understanding of his of him and his Victoria's period during that time? Well, yeah, I, I honestly I didn't know about the, you know, you know, as you'll see in the film, he, he got horrible death threats. And, and um, when he, he he got thrown out of the World Cup, he got red carded, um, which a lot of people knew. I, I, I really didn't follow that stuff before. Um, and then he proceeded to have, some would say, and maybe he would say one of the greatest seasons of his career. He certainly had the best season of anybody in English football. He was a runner up for the Ballon d'Or, which is the best football player in the world. He was He finished second. Um, his team won the treble Manchester United that season, which made him even more hated anywhere outside of Manchester in England. Like they, then they hated him double down because not only had he been thrown out of the world cup in 98, 99, his team wins the treble, which had never been done before. And then the hate was just out of control in England. Um, so to persevere through all that takes an incredibly strong person and that was kind of like my journey with David is like, who is this guy? How does this kid from East End of London, humble beginnings, turn into this global superstar, even through all the ups and downs, like a roller coaster? And I think we hopefully made a series that you do feel like you're going up and down, like on a ride for, you know, 280 minutes. Yeah, I mean, that that was the first thing I noticed between the first two episodes. The first episode does feel like the 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 ascent uh and then the second episode is definitely uh that 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 decline but you use the word perseverant and i think that is from from what i've already seen that is the 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 first word that comes to mind when you are watching david beckham and and victoria beckham and the just the 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 spice girls just uh, their their lives are are pretty i mean one of the things i i really enjoyed was like it really feels like these are two people that you would want to hang out with. And yeah. it, it, they seem way more accessible and, and normal for how famous they actually were. Was that one? Uh, did that take you by surprise of just uh, the humility? Yeah, completely. I mean, obviously, I spent, a, I spent a lot more time with David, but I did get to spend time with Victoria. But yes, they are like, I mean, David is like just the... You know, he's just like a dude who wants to hang out, have a good dinner, have a good time. You'd never know, um, except when he gets up from the table, that he was, you know, famous because he gets, still gets pretty mobbed wherever he goes. Um, yeah, that was one of the shockers for me. And, and I think, look, when you make documentaries as a filmmaker, the job you have when you're making a film about a subject is to try to capture the essence of that subject. Who is that person really? And um, I'm hoping that that's what we did. And um, we, you know, David certainly gave us a lot of time and uh, it took two years. I interviewed him over 10 different times for over three hours each. So it was a long, it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of time together. Um, not to mention, you know, some verite stuff in Miami, which is the hat I'm wearing, which is yes, nice. no, very much so. Messi, <laughs> Messi's first game. There you go. Uh, he's killing it right now. I guess through watching this, for those of us who've met him, all three of us, right? We're all good friends with uh, David. <laughs> yeah. We call him David as well. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, sometimes I throw in a David. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, mix yeah. it Just up. Remind him of <laughs> coming around with drink. He is a quarter Jewish, by the way. There you go. Okay. 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 Amazing. <laughs> all right, shalom, my guy. Um, I guess for those of us who've met him, and obviously you had some access that 
99.999% of the world will never get. Is there something specific about him that completely shocked you about how normal he is? Or you mentioned he's just a dude. What's something that humanized him to you almost the moment you met him? Well, he, um, the first interview we did in his uh, so-called man cave, um, we, re we rearranged the furniture to do the interview um, and we uh, left a bit of, you know, little things. He um, meticulously uh, started rearranging the room back to the way it was. Um, and even turning the bottles in the liquor cabinet so that they faced the correct way. And, and I had heard about his OCD, but I didn't really kind of, I hadn't witnessed it at that <laughs> point. And, um, and then you'll see, you got, well, you saw the second episode, the opening. Um, he, uh, he has this compulsion of things being straight and neat and um, everything tidy, which um, my, my girlfriend, wife wished, I, uh, that I was like more like David. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so that was really um, interesting. And I, I think he, had, the other thing that was a real uh, journey for me making the film was how much David wanted to be loved yet how much he was his own self. He wouldn't bend his will or his self if uh, to be liked, but he really wanted to be liked. But if it meant, conforming and that is what we really get into with his relationship with, the, with sir alex ferguson and with his father um because it is kind of also a father and son story but he really uh is uh like he remembers names like i, I mean much better than i do uh, when he meets people and he he listens he listens like you know like an he he just most people don't i don't listen very well i listen when i'm on stage or doing a movie as an actor, but in real life, like, uh, you know, but David listens and pays attention. He's really in the moment uh, in, a, in a really interesting way, which kind of also is part of what makes him special and different. Yeah. When, uh, when we met him, that was one of the things it was just like, why are you looking at us in the eyes, David Beckham? Yeah, like, yeah. why are you so focused on every word we're saying? <laughs> we're nobodies. <laughs> so it's I, I remarkable. Don't think, I don't think he thinks that. That's what's so remarkable about him is that he uh, he has an incredible appreciation for people and he loves people, um, which is you have to. When you see episode three, when he goes to Asia with Real Madrid, I mean, you, you just never see anything like it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. The 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 um you you mentioned a father son story and and I think after people are done watching this uh, documentary series the that relationship is going to be a bigger part because I you know be a part of, of more people's just uh, awareness because I did not know uh, this at all I didn't know about his relationship with uh, his father and just the you know th there's a and I don't want to sound too critical, but it's just like obviously a, a kind of an overbearing father in in sure. pushing him to be great. Um, and then, you know, a, a kind of common story: a mom being like, you know, be a little easy on him and stuff like that. But th those conversations with his parents, what what did you walk away from those conversations uh, feeling and and learning? Well, listen, the the mom and dad uh, definitely had different ideas about what is strict what what is it to be hard on someone but i have to say like as david says in the film um i don't think he would have gotten through the red card and the 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 murder threats and the yeah. kidnapping threats without that discipline that his dad and sir alex ferguson taught him that is just clear that those two put into his head that this fierce determination. Now, also David had the strength to do it. Not everybody has the strength to just soldier on. Um, and I think in the end, you know, there's definitely things that maybe there's a, it's weird. His mother's extremely warm and his father's extremely tough. Um, David has his mother's warmth, even through all the toughness of his dad. What you guys felt when you met him, what I feel is there's an incredible warmth to this guy that, so. and that's from the mom. She's wonderful. I got, you know, I, I interviewed her three times. Um, I got to know her. You, you kind of need to get to know the parents um, when you do a, a story on 
on someone. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, they, they gave me access. And I think the dad, you know, as he says, he comes off like he, he wouldn't have done it any other way. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because the, the, there was one moment, um, uh, I think, where you had asked the question to his dad about, like, kind of being so tough on him. And he kind of just chalked it up to, like, well, I was right, right? Yeah, like, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. There, and there's a little, it's just one of those things of, like, if I was watching this documentary 30 years ago, I would have been like, hey, all right, yeah, this is this is how we create, you know, generational athletes with this kind of like pressure. Pressure makes diamonds. But then maybe my my 2023 brain is like, oh, maybe he should have been a little nicer to can David you, back Can home. you tell Christian just had a baby five months ago? <laughs> yeah, I, I could feel the, the soft father in you. Now, you're not going to turn into Agassiz's dad either. Right. Like, no. I don't think that's happening. The difference, with, the difference with Agassiz is like Agassiz turned to, you know, he crashed, right? He came, But the beauty of Agassiz is he came back. But, yeah. you know, he really crashed, right? He got into drugs. If you read his book, um, yeah. you know, terrible marriage. Um, and then he found himself, which is great. But David never, the other crazy thing about David is he never really crashed. Not yeah. quick. You know, been floating. He just uh, he, yeah. he wore a sarong once, Fisher. What do yeah. you mean? <laughs> Rock bottom. I mean, no, the guy was a superstar. My my wife knows nothing about football, knows who David Beckham is. And yeah. that, that's a testament to his popularity. But I do have to ask, uh, before we got on, you said there was a couple clubs you would not have done this for. Uh, <laughs> wow. Is there is there one in particular where you're like, oh, it's just one step too far for you? Well, it's complicated because I, I – I, I loathe Man City. Um, <laughs> okay, so that makes I sense. Loathe, I loathe Man City, but I think they're phenomenal. And I think Pep Guardiola is just a master genius. And and their players are great. I just don't like the, the way that they – they just seem to spend uncontrollably and get no penalty. You know, they say they're going to get slapped. They get their wrist slapped. And they, right, right. So, uh, I mean – uh, I really don't like Man City, and 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 for whatever reason, I'm I I I used to love Chelsea. I was a massive DDA Drogba fan, but I just can't I just can't seem to find. And my producer John Batsik, he loves Chelsea. I mean, he bleeds blue. He loves the team, and I don't know. I just I get such joy when they lose and when Man City. <laughs> Um, no, I get it. I I'm mean, an Arsenal fan. I love whenever another I'm in, uh, I'm in London an, team loses. I'm in an Everton group chat that of all it's all a bunch of comedians that live uh, in Liverpool, uh, but they're all Everton fans, and so I get to understand sort of the culture of what it like what it's like to be an Everton fan. And I, I would have to say I sense more joy in that group chat when Liverpool lose rather than when Everton win. win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a shame because I, I like I I like Everton, but. I, Listen, um, this is the truth to be told. My one of my best oldest friends uh, took over Liverpool years ago and is the president. And once LeBron went, James, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no, no. Mike Mike Gordon, Mike Gordon. And once he um, once he went to Liverpool, I just I I loved Arsenal. I loved Chelsea. I'm a fair weather American who got to football and is you know I wasn't. I, I didn't get into it till I did a movie about the Pele and Beckenbauer coming to America, this movie called Once in a Lifetime. Um, and once I made that, I made it with the same producer, Batsik, and he took me to see a Chelsea game at Stamford Bridge. And I fell in love with football and I fell in love with Drogba and I started supporting Chelsea briefly and then moved, met, met an Arsenal family and fell in love with Arsenal. And then, but Mike, once Mike took over Liverpool, that was it. I'm all in. I'll never change. It's okay. well, you did a great job with that film, too, because that was absolutely incredible. Uh, I want to ask you one last question. When uh, One time I was hanging out with Thierry Henry, uh, a little bit of a flex of my own. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, and there was, he, I was like, oh, what a regular human being. And then there's a moment where you're like, oh, no, this is a superstar. <laughs> right. There was The way someone reacted to seeing him on the street was as if a ghost came out of me. It was just <laughs> like, what? Like, eyes wide. Was there a moment that you had that realization? Because I know you're getting a personal conversation with him and his family, but is there, is there a moment you realize, like, oh, this is the David Beckham? Mm, well, I'll tell you, but more, more to your point about Thierry Henry and David Beckham being superstar athletes, right? So, 
for me, it was more like I, I even though David is so down to earth and you're hanging out, but you realize, uh, and you guys haven't seen the last episode. So we film, we film him, um, uh, on the pitch with his son and you realize he's 48 years old and he's still like superhuman in terms of his athletic abilities. Um, and, and it's like, Oh my God. I mean, we're not like, yeah, we can be having dinner, but he is a different species than me. Right. Because yeah, of his, yeah. his athleticism is so incredible. And then I'm like, Holy shit, this guy's a sports, you know, these people are like, from a different planet than us show folk, you know? Um, and that's when I get more like, Oh my God, he is, you know, like he's disciplined. This guy still works out six days a week. Right. And he still Jesus. kicks the freaking football. He still kicks it. Um, and that's for me, like Thierry Henry is like, Oh my God, he's my wife's hero, favorite player of all time of all time his his uh, pictures on our fridge actually that's so dope <laughs> yeah were you just like at dinner with david beckham looking at the dinner rolls like i bet you could kick this into that lady's <laughs> wine glass right now <laughs> you know and then on top yeah. and then on top of all that he's also insanely handsome bro it's just not fair that at all fucking annoying that fucking annoys me that oh. don't that that me off i can't I'm just that, staring that at his be, jawline no that's <laughs> That, 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 that. Well, it's too much, God. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, life isn't uh, fair, uh, but uh, what is fair is that you'll get the opportunity uh, to watch uh, the Beckham documentary on Netflix October 4th. Go check it out. It's uh, truly, truly incredible. I mean, we've seen uh, kind of similar sort of series uh, or similar docs uh, around, you know, uh, Class of 92, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've yeah. seen similar similar things, uh, but this is definitely the most in-depth, most personal story uh, about you David Beckham. You get to Beckham really know David Beckham. And his family. Yeah, highly, highly recommend this. Well, so I, just, I just want to say, I, I did, I had a, I had to be um, careful because I didn't want to make it a sports doc, right? Because David's life is much more than sport. It's culture. It's, um, family it's it, 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 so i i had to balance the line between sports and entertainment and just emotional i wanted to make it emotional and i wanted to make it for people that love football and people that don't like football at all so i would screen it i have a couple of really nerdy uh friends uh male friends and women friends who just don't know anything about football don't even know the rules and i would screen it for them and get feedback just to make sure that i didn't have too much football or yeah you know what I mean? so um that was a, a tightrope i was walking with my team the whole time yeah i you know i was uh watching uh with with my wife who you know pays attention to the game uh, fairly casually um but more than anything i i knew this was just a a, a hit when she was just uh, when she asked me questions about things that we're both watching, you know what I mean? So she'll be right. like, did that really happen? I'm like, we're both watching. Yes, yeah. it's real. <laughs> like that's how you're wild. watching at the same time I am. <laughs> so that's how yeah. wild this man's life is where she's just like, there's no way that happened. I didn't know that happened. I'm like, yeah, look, I mean, this is actually happening. The one, the last question I have is just uh, maybe, uh, maybe a look more for, uh, toward the future, but into Miami and this project, um, for Beckham, I mean, you know, I, I, I remember going to uh, David Beckham's games when he got to MLS, playing for the LA Galaxy. Um, but now that he is an owner and Lionel Messi is in Major League Soccer, playing for Inter Miami, it, it, we've already been kind of flabbergasted at, at uh, some of the skill that we've uh, we've been seeing. But Messi's impact on um, not only the league but on Beckham himself. I mean, did he have you had any conversations about? what Inter Miami looks like and what Messi is doing for uh, his own life and, and, and the club? Well, unfortunately, we were locked and then Messi, picture was locked and then Messi go over, went over and I just had to open up one section quickly to get the first game. Um, but David, uh, I can tell you since I've been filming with him for a few years that um, all of a sudden he's at every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna miss anything. And he loves going, and he loves those those. And by the way, all of the team is playing. Yedlin's playing much better. Come, yeah. They're all playing so much better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I I saw that the three stars, the three Spaniards or two Spaniards and one Busquets, Alba, and 
Messi missed the last game. Yeah. Um, they still drew, which was pretty good for them. They played a good team. Um, so I think it's really transformed. Yeah, David's excited. He's jacked up. He's He loves it. He absolutely loves it. And he it's, loves it. He loves those guys. I can tell you personally, he absolutely adores those three guys who came okay. over. Nice. I mean, I, yeah. you got to do the Messi doc, Messi in Miami doc next. <laughs> They're making it. Oh, oh, okay. You know what? Then you can make the Cooligans doc. We'll, there you we'll go. Let you, have you know it. what? We'll go to Miami. <laughs> we'll, go to Mi- <laughs> we'll go to Miami. Beckham will fall in love with us. The Cooligans, You'll be yeah. there. It'll be quite Let's entertaining. Tell me all about your your you know your love lives, your ups and downs, and your absolutely. Yeah, it's all all, all ups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two stand up comics that ended up in soccer. Yeah. All ups. And let's There's see no how you good at. Let's see how good you are at investigative documentary. If you could find my dad, that would be <laughs> awesome. That- Okay, let's get let's get on it. Okay, <laughs> Fisher, <laughs> uh, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, again, uh, October fourth on Netflix. Go check out uh, the Beckham documentary. Uh, 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 Fisher did an incredible job on this. So, thank uh, but thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome back anytime. All right. uh, we, I, we heard that you're uh, in the area in New York, so you're welcome to come by the studio anytime sure. you ever want to do the show. So, uh, seriously, right. uh, go Thanks. check out uh, go check out the uh, absolute doc. All right, cheers, man. Bye. Good luck with your baby. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Fisher Stevens, the homie, uh, coming through. He also he lives in Brooklyn too, so Love maybe yeah. uh, he might come through the studio. We'll someday. get him in the studio. He's got to. We got to have a pre production meeting for the Cooligan stock that he's directing right <laughs> after this. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's right. We uh, we pitched the, a Cooligan's documentary, um, and you know, I mean, no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Fisher. It'll, it'll be mostly me just uh, bottle feeding my baby. Uh, but <laughs> it's good content. People like that stuff nowadays. Yeah, you know, do. it could be like a nice. We could do reality show style yeah, like sure. uh, you know uh, uh alexis uh, driving up to cbs at three in the morning he's like i'm so <laughs> tired bro i'm just so tired you know yeah, as someone that's been there a little a couple times now him walking into that stu- into that uh studio at 5 a.m like, <laughs> bro, i'm tired bro, bro you need yeah, it's a, uh, without it's good content without sure. uh, a cafecito you can't get your day started yeah. uh, so uh so again so shout out to uh, uh fisher stevens um let let's uh, we spoke a lot about uh, uh miami and and inter miami with uh with him but let's uh let's get to you know some uh, inter miami obviously the the main story and main highlight i know it's a when 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 you guys are in your pre-production meetings how how difficult is it to not only talk about Messi, is it, is it, is you have to push now for like other topics, right? Yeah, we do. I mean, look, it's it's been obvious. It's it's massive for the league. So yeah, obviously, we're we're talking a lot of Messi, and we do a lot of our you know a lot of uh, our pregame shows before in our Miami games have now turned into hour long pregame shows <laughs> yeah, yeah, rather than half an hour or fifteen minutes because we have both of those as well. Uh, but yeah, no, like we have to try to find what, you know the biggest challenge is trying to find different ways to talk about him, sure, right? and, and and try to move the story forward, not just always keep going back to the same thing. I mean, I mean, it's just a it's a crazy thing to talk about. It's still insane it's so, to think about that he's playing in Major League <laughs> Soccer. Like it, it's uh, it, it, it's been a a thing that. I, I don't know how to properly. I need time to yeah. reflect on it, right? Like <laughs> living in it feels like what weird, <laughs> yeah. Like we're in the, the twilight zone or something, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, it has been uh, quite the story. But we didn't get to see uh, him play this weekend against New York City FC, and this was an interesting thing because I uh, was the I was one of the hosts at uh, Terminal Five nice. uh, for NYCFC, and it was a, a great time. Uh, you know, they, they they it was a party essentially. I yeah. mean, they had a uh, uh, the reggaeton. De, de la Ghetto, uh, who I'm a huge fan of. Nice. He performed bef- uh, 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 beforehand. It looked so, like a, it looked like a good party over it, there. Man. It was great, yeah. man. It was it, it it was funny because the um, obviously there was a lot of NYCFC fans, just a lot of soccer fans. There was one person in a messy uh, jersey. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Get out! Bro? Of here. <laughs> Get out! Get of here. Out this here. ain't the move. Bro. Where's the bouncer, bro? <laughs> but. Um, the uh, uh, but it was it, it was interesting. There was obviously a lot of NYCFC jerseys and the, and the whole thing. Um, but then there were also uh, you know people dressed like they were going to see De La Ghetto. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a reggaeton concert. They're like, it. oh, what's all this? What are these soccer balls? Hey man, <laughs> it's NYCFC, baby. They do it right. I love it. Let's go. So no, the the crowd was incredible. I had a, a great time. It was it was funny because last year uh, Alexis and I both hosted it. And um, and it was the same game uh, at Terminal Five against against Miami. It was all same thing. Whole 
party. NYCFC is winning this game. Uh, and then uh, Inter Miami tie in the second half. And then um, there's a giveaway. Uh, oh, why am I forgetting his name? Who's the, the, the guy that Miami signed from Toronto? Uh, the DP. Uh, 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 Pozuelo, Pozuelo. Pozuelo. Alejandro Pozuelo. Yeah. Okay. And uh, terrible giveaway. And he like basically that, yeah. tapped yeah. it. So well, I'm at this essentially a nightclub, <laughs> yeah. partying, enjoying soccer. We're winning the game. And then Pozuelo comes in and destroys it. And then it was like, it was like right at the end. It was like a minute left in the game. And uh, we just had to be like, all right, everybody. Okay, take care. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> when I was just, I was wanted a party. We were supposed to have the after party. Yeah, yeah. Right what, a, what a buzzkill, man. <laughs> so when uh, uh, Santi Rodriguez scores the goal, bro, the, the place lit up. We're winning. Couple minutes left. We should. We got this. Inter Miami. You know. We saw the the uh, Kremaski and Arroyo. <laughs> Bro, that was. <laughs> that I got. I'll, I'll play the clip in a second. But that was that was also a uh, wild. But uh, Inter Miami end up uh, uh, drawing this game. But this is this was a game um, with which is just so important for both teams. I mean, yeah. Inter Miami desperately need the yeah. three points more than than NYCFC did. But all these teams in the Eastern Conference uh, are. Fighting for these last two, uh, two, three. Oh, the Nationals just clinched. Right, uh, two playoff spots, yep. and a lot of people have an opportunity. So when it comes to uh, um, Messi missing the game, but also Inter Miami dropping these points, what what's the likelihood of of two things that they make it, and then that we also see Messi play again uh, this season? I think all the all the teams around it's almost like none of them really want to get in the right. playoffs. <laughs> They're all trying to throw it away. So that I guess. Gives them that little hope. They don't control their own destiny anymore. Yeah. After that draw against NYC, Chicago does somehow. Chicago fire. They, they beat the Rebel. Be, have, Re yeah. Rebel, <laughs> the Rebels. Uh, Rebel Arena was a huge win. <laughs> That's a huge win. And they, you know, they kind of now have a, a drive. If they can win their games and they have a, a decent little schedule here because they're going to take on an inner Miami team this, uh, this week, midweek, with likely without Lionel Messi. Uh, again, this is a disclaimer. I work for Major Soccer. I do not know whether <laughs> Messi is playing or not. I do not know this because my, my Twitter gets... Let's gets, call up Darren England. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Darren England knows somehow. <laughs> no, he definitely doesn't know that. He definitely don't know. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know a lot of all the things. He's like, but, check complete. That's yeah, all he says. Check complete. Who's the yeah, Messi? Check, check I've one. never heard of this yeah. guy before. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know whether he's going to play, but all signs point to him not playing and not being on the bench and not being available. Uh, maybe through the international break is what, what I've heard. Specifically me. Yeah. But I don't know. Just, just <laughs> right. throw that out there one more time. Uh, but look, man, do they still have a shot? Yes, because uh, I think that they still have a, a talented roster, albeit a young roster of the players that are left. The Kravaski at 18 years old. Robert Taylor is a young player. Facundo Farias, a young player. Aviles, a young player. So it's it's a team that still has talent. They look they look like they're spent. They look like they got no more energy. That's They've really played that's, a lot of games. That's one of my uh, kind of main uh, points. I think the uh, we're we're kind of being a little kind of flippant about you know we talk about. Uh, Busquets and, and Alba and Messi. But these other guys have also, they've been going 90 minutes. Yeah, they've been yeah, playing yeah. these games fully yeah. and winning League's Cup uh, and then he, and then playing the U.S. Open Cup, uh, uh, these MLS matches, it, there's, you know, the, the, the comments from Steve Chirondolo, uh after losing Campeones Cup. He's kind of, Again, put it uh, on blast. He's made the, the 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 criticism before about that, like the MLS roster rules don't allow for teams to play these many uh, these many fixtures. And sometimes people are like, "Look, it's Steve co complaining, no, <laughs> man." But, what? but it's like at some point, it's like it doesn't matter. It, you you are essentially penalized for winning so much because yeah. you're you're in more competitions, and there's no way to like. Kind of manage it. We've heard that in in Europe as well with the Champions League clubs. Um, but it seems like maybe it, what's the is it the roster size? I don't. What yeah. is the exact issue? Yeah, it's the roster size. They, it's not the same amount uh, as European clubs. European clubs can carry like forty something players Got on the roster. And MLS can I, look. I think that uh, I think MLS is going to look at that in the offseason. I think they're going to have to. Uh, because look, at the end of the day, they want Messi playing, right? right? They want Messi playing as many games as possible. And look, he is a, and it's not just him, but I'm using him because he's the biggest example. He's 36 years old, man. Like, yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm 30, 37. Things hurt. And I'm not a pro <laughs> athlete. Right? I'm not a professional soccer player. And a lot of things hurt. You know, So I can't even imagine the guy who's doing that. Yeah. You know, I, I, at his level and got over a thousand games behind him. And my, what I thought, when I thought it, this would be maybe an issue looking at it is because after that Ecuador game with Argentina where he gets subbed off, 
my dad, Argentine dad, calling me like, what happened? What happened? I saw him come off freaking out. He comes off. That's already like, okay, that's a concern. And when he spoke in the media after, he says, this is going to happen a lot more where I'm going to have to come out of games. He's never, ever said anything like that. Right. Ever. He never wants to come out. For him to admit, like, this might have to happen more often where I come out of games, that's already like, okay, red flag number one. Like, he's feeling it. So it's gonna ha- they're going to have to put him on some kind of a program where he's still playing as much as possible. But if they don't ex- expand those, those rosters next season and he they come into the, ro- into the season with this many players, it's going to catch up to him and, and to all the other guys, too, because, like I said, it's, it's a lot of games these yeah. guys are playing. In, I, I think MLS. it's just – And me- they're in Champions – and CONCACAF Champions Cup Yeah, I think year. because it's messy and because, you know, <clears throat> obviously we just want to see him play, but we just almost don't even think – there's, like, two things. We don't think he's, like, human, right? Because right. yeah, yeah, yeah. he, <laughs> he also doesn't really get hurt that much no, in his career. No, in his career he hasn't. No. He has, it hasn't really been a thing that's, uh, like, nagged him, but then – he also walks so much. You're like, what are you? What, how are you getting hurt? <laughs> You're just walking out there. You don't do nothing, bro. And then it's like, oh yeah. But then, when, then the magic uh, right. comes and, out. And I think that the, the, him walking all that is what's kept him at this level for <laughs> yeah. so long. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take breaks for a little while in the game. I'm just gonna chill, read it, Quiet get clean. my opportunity. I'll put a banger in the top corner. That's what I do. Uh, 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 so yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it's 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 disappointing. I mean, look, I, I'm you know, I'm I'm comfortable with if he gets shut down for the season. Uh, because then we get to see him next year, and and he'll probably play the entire season and stuff like that. So uh, a a nice break will yeah. will will do him justice. He'll get a proper off season where he really hasn't had one. If you think about it, he hasn't had a proper off season. Mm-hmm. This is with the World Cup in the middle too, where he won right. that, and then the season continuing on, then continue straight into MLS Leagues Cup. All that it's it's been a it's been he, a wait, he was like he got off the yacht from his vacation <laughs> yeah. to like his, right on to the the in- induction like ceremony thing, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. the introduction. Uh, but the, these are the last four uh, remaining matches for uh, in MLS for uh, Inter Miami. They have uh, the Chicago Fire at, at Soldier Field with uh, I, I think we've already confirmed or we've heard that Messi's not playing in that one. When I know the Fire furious that <laughs> the game yeah, they're they're not so, happy. they yeah. sold so many tickets for that. Um, then it's uh, FC Cincinnati and Charlotte twice, and and it's a, a, a you know a, what is that a rubber match or whatever is that called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, home, yeah, home and home, home there, yeah. The so that's the, the 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 you lose to Cincinnati. It is what it is, right? You understand yeah. that. Yeah, and, and you got also Cincinnati's already clinched the supporters' shield. So you wonder, you know, how how many other players will be fully involved in that as they yeah. get ready for the playoffs. Which, by the way, if 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 this is kind of crazy, but if Inter Miami does make the playoffs, if Messi is healthy, and Cincinnati. Then gets yeah, <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. A, you just win the supporter shield. Here's Messi. Here you go. Here's your, again, your first round appointment again. again. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, look the game. The game against uh, the Fire. If Miami win that game, then that I think that throws everything into like, yep. all right, we might see him again. He might play yeah. because the, the, there's a real opportunity. The Charlotte is is the team uh, you know uh, ahead of them in the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are the Fire. So, you know, looking at you look at some of the other results, some a couple of teams lose DC United, yeah. Got a DC. I mean, look, I'm hoping <laughs> It, yeah, it's 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 like you look at those teams, Christian. You trust DC United? <laughs> you trust the Fire? Do you trust the Red Bulls? That's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. you can't say Montreal's another team that you don't trust, especially away from home. Mm-hmm. Like that's why you still can't like completely close the door. It's a lot more difficult now after the result against NYC. Uh, but it's it's not over yet. It's, this game this weekend, if, if this if they lose this game, it's over. They, uh, but yeah, this game is a big one for them. There's, so this there's, week, look, me. there's 12 points available for them. They realistically they could make it with nine. Yeah, it's not impossible. They also got the games in hand on everybody. Yeah, uh, at least one game in hand on everybody. Uh, except Charlotte, but they play Charlotte twice. Yeah, so. just, I mean, this it's so it's gonna be interesting, bro. If they beat Charlotte twice, <laughs> like how mad? Would it be? I mean, the yeah, and bad. I've already seen a lot of uh, uh, Charlotte FC uh, uh, supporters really frustrated yeah. uh, with their team, and like obviously just uh, uh, poor results, uh, giving uh, away games late and stuff like that. Um, but th- so yeah, this is what kind of keeps it interesting. But this game against the Fire is going to be uh, huge. Like, are, are the Fire going to kind of spoil the show for everybody? Because uh, uh, you know, a lot of neutrals are just like, yeah, it'd be nice to see Messi, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> in the playoffs. Well, so we'll see if they uh, if they can uh, bring it. Um, given that you are uh, you are from Miami, <laughs> I, I want to make sure I I, I, I give you uh, the opportunity because. 
Uh, Jimmy Butler. I see this is a show about soccer, but yeah, it's Jimmy, all right. J- it's, we it's, love hoops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a co- there's a couple of things. The, the you are you are from uh, Miami, and Jimmy Butler uh, <laughs> has made the news, bro, because he his media day, uh, his media days. Yeah. Now he's done this multiple times. Um, he th- this is. So we're looking at a photo of Jimmy, Jimmy Butler with the finest bangs you've ever seen. <laughs> this is emo, emo, emo Butler. Uh, people are calling him, uh, what do they call him? Uh, I saw Mike Golick Jr. called him uh, Backboard Confessional, <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny. That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's a bunch of really good ones. Uh, but this is um, this is wild. <laughs> I mean, he look, he's a character. It's yeah. great. But one of my favorite things about Jimmy Butler is that he can be like goofy like this and silly. But my man, you can't you can't guard him on the court. No. It's just like there's a there doesn't he can do any dumb thing he wants and and it's like all right, fine, make fun of me. I'm a I'm a dunk on you. That, yeah. that, that, I mean, it was the best thing ever, right? He he comes out. He says he's emo. Uh, it's been a, it's been a rough week for South Florida and <laughs> right, South Florida right, right. fans. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of things we talked about with the Heat, not getting Dame Lillard, and then missing out on Drew Holiday too. So it's been a rough time, and you've got to feel for Jimmy because now he 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 realizes, oh, it's gonna be the same thing again. It's gonna be my <laughs> me against the world. Uh, but he loves it, and he comes in all emotional. He does the bit, and it's hilarious. He got his the piercing the done, e- which is the- wow. It's it's commitment to the, <laughs> the to the troll, piercing. commitment to the troll. Yeah, I respect that, dude. But what I loved about it is he ends it with saying. He ends up by saying, see you in the finals. <laughs> and it's just like, you got to love That's Jimmy. Jimmy. That's Jimmy That's in a Jimmy. nutshell, bro. That's swag, bro. Uh, so you love to see it. This not is- things, not, swag isn't what I would call that. Uh, that those, those, <laughs> those bangs in the emo. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it works for him. It works it's because fine. he's we Jimmy. We all went to school yeah. with this kid. Yes, yeah, right? I mean, I, it's, it's interesting because I, I went to high school... And I and I like rock music, and I listen to a lot of uh, a, a bands of uh, like fans dressed like this yeah. to listen to, to certain bands or whatever. Um, and I just like the music. I was like, I ain't do all that. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, I mean, no. Do I got to do the whole costume <laughs> next uh, week on, the, on Thursday? Christian tries bringing a wig. Yes, <laughs> yes. The, the, the Jinko jeans and everything. I'm like, bro, this is too much. I'm just. Who, I just what soccer player would you oh, picture doing coming question. out with one of these? Bro, so I I mean, I think the easy one is and I just met him on Thursday, but Breck Shea. Breck Shea oh God, is yes. this guy. Yes. All right? Oh my God. That's perfect. <laughs> and it's the blonde one. The blonde. So it's like even better. Like <laughs> looking like good Charlotte, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I love it. Breck Shea, would, that's a perfect fit. That's his look, yeah. bro. Okay. He's already Jimmy got it. stole Nailed that it. look from Breck, I think. <laughs> so uh, the other thing also, you... um. It is, what a, a small world and great connection, but you also were an intern at Levitard Show. Yeah, it was. Uh, how, when was that? How long ago was that? It was that? a long time ago, and I was only there for a little bit. Uh uh, shout out Mike Ryan, one of my one of my buddies from high school. You know, we're, we're still uh, we're still pretty close. But anyway, he uh, yeah, we were there. It was it was it was different times, right? It was a just a, an afternoon drive show. Levitard was at the time. I think you always saw the talent they had in that room, and that you know it was going to be bigger. But it was. If you listen to the Levitard show, you know that it, you know it, it can go off the rails at times. Yeah, dude. Well, think about that, but just on local radio, and it was just <laughs> as mad, it was just as bad. But look, like, again, I was only there for a short time. Uh, it was always super fun. Those guys do an amazing job. It's a, it's a it's a top quality team. So, and they're uh, always rooting for them as well. So, uh, yeah, what a yeah, what a great uh, little connection. Yeah, uh, it's Metal Arc family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't introduced to Levitard until uh, the um, well, ESPN. Oh yeah, yeah, and I and I would watch on. Um, ESPN News. I just would keep it on all the time and yep. just like, you know, learning about the, the sort of cast of characters. So it's like a, a kind of wild to uh, so, sort of grow up okay. with uh, uh, Levitard and then uh, and then be on the show and then have Levitar call me a gas bag. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, him. Dan, I love you, bro, but that was messed up, man. I love you, but that was messed up, Dan. There it is. <laughs> You're Shout the out, gas Dan. bag. <laughs> yeah. Showed ya. Showed you, bro. Got him. <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, so uh, wow. All right. So, um, Dude, this has been uh, 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 great so far. So, uh, uh, Stefano, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, uh, man. Let people know uh, where they can find you and watch you. And obviously, you're doing your great work. Yeah, on, man. I'm on, uh, I'm on all the social social media platforms, S underscore for sorrow. And yeah, Apple TV, MLS season pass, English, Spanish, uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of both, a little bit of commentary as well here and there. And then uh, now doing some work on the side for uh, for CBS Golasso on uh, Morning Footy and Box to Box. 
uh, every once in a while. So yeah, man. Awesome, stuff. bro. Yeah, I got. I can. Uh, you know, at night it's a little tougher, but in the morning <laughs> I have a uh, morning footy on, feeding the baby, yeah. watching uh, uh, Stefano. We need more Cubans covering <laughs> soccer. You love to see it. I, I got. I got the crazy mix because it's Cuban Argentine. I got like a little bit of both. It's a, it's a crazy mix we sure, got. Sure, <laughs> I got Dominican and Dominicano, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so I've, I've disappointed my family. <laughs> uh, yeah, where's the baseball show? <laughs> They're like, hey, what well, pelota? Yeah, <laughs> dude, they're, they're baffled. They're confused. Uh, but no, man. I mean, the, the, I, I took my, my – I went to a CONCACAF Champions League game in Dominican Republic to see uh, uh, Cibao FC, which is the, the club where my family's from, uh, to play against Chivas. Nice. And I brought my aunt and uncle, and just, uh, just it's just great. Uh, bringing the Dominican family to a soccer game. They call it Ballon Pie out there, bro. Wow, wow, wow. That's <laughs> it's a funny. whole different sport, I think. <laughs> uh, but no, it's great to see. Uh, but Stefano, thank you so much for joining me. As always, everybody, make sure you follow at Soccer Cooligans on all social channels. Uh, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Soccer Cooligans for some exclusive Content, contenido. Uh, so, uh, again, shout out to uh, Stefano. Thank you so much for joining me. Shout out Fisher Stevens. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. Fisher Stevens uh, coming through. Watch the Beckham documentary uh, and and be on the lookout for the Cooligans documentary <laughs> directed by Fisher Stevens, which we have, have forced him to, to, to direct it. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back on Thursday. Uh, Alexis will be back from uh, his, uh, his Miami cruise. He was on a cruise with his family. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he'll be back on Thursday. Uh, but uh, as always, Shout out to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It's the Cooligans, buddy. See you on Thursday. Peace.